Gone are the days where you could just slap on a monocle and talk in a French accent to make people think that you're fancy. The general public has wised up since then, and it's much harder to fake having some kind of class or sophistication. So we're gonna talk about how to make a two chord song a little more interesting, where maybe it's just kind of like a basic chord progression that you're doing for specifically an acoustic accompaniment. We're gonna use the amazing song, Dreams by Fleetwood Mac, because it's only two chords and it's a great example of kind of like finding the space in a song where the vocalist isn't to do something interesting to try to keep people's attention for the duration for a longer song, right? So Dreams is great, it's F to G. The whole thing is F to G. You can just do this the whole time and play it. But I'm gonna get bored. Likely everybody in the audience is gonna get bored unless you have like a super hot lead singer kind of doing their thing, which you know. But we're gonna talk about how you can kind of take these two chords, you can apply this to really anything in any kind of arrangement or composition, just kind of do different things, all right? So first of all, a lot of it is gonna to have to do with how you're actually strumming the song, and then kind of like adding dynamics, adding different things to kind of split up and make parts, even though the music isn't changing, how you're playing the chords is gonna be different depending on what part of the song you're in, okay? So in this case, the verses, I'm just gonna really palm mute a lot of it. Now the one thing that you'll notice is I'm adding open string hammer-ons to these chords, okay? So even though I'm playing an F kind of bar, I'm not really even barring it, I'm just hitting the first fret of the E string, the third fret of the A string, the third fret of the D string, the second fret of the G string, right? I'm really just kind of taking the low part of this chord because I don't want to get a big... I don't want that, that that's gonna be a, a 10 out of 10 as far as volume, as far as busyness goes. I wanna save that, have that kind of as my last resort. If I really need to take the song to that spot, I can only do that once. It's hard to kind of go anywhere from there. So when you're starting out, uh, kind of limit the stroke to maybe just like the lower, bassier part of the song. And then when you do that, you can do this little thing where you hammer on an open string. It doesn't even matter if the note that you're hammering on is in the key. In this case, it does happen to be, be true. An F to a G major chord is specifically a four five progression in the key of C, in which E is a note. Again, if that doesn't matter to you, it's fine. But what you can do is take this F chord and then take that back and forth. You can do the whole chord. You know, that has varying degrees of, of working out, but the point is, if it's just a little kind of moment in time, you can kind of hammer on and do something like that, okay? So another reason I like using this song as an example of doing this is because we're really trying to incorporate a lot of what the band is doing. I think Fleetwood is probably one of like the best like pop rock bands ever because they're just so solid all the way around. You have like one of the great rhythm sections of all time. You have a guitar player, Lindsey Buckingham, who really does a great job of filling out space without me, without being like a, a riff mentality, but just really kind of filling stuff out. And then Stevie Nicks is one of the all time kind of like flow singers just kind of singing over everything. So the first thing we're gonna do after just going from an F to a G is we're gonna make some kind of riff in between where the singer isn't singing, okay? So the way we're gonna start off is kind of like doing what Lindsay's doing, uh, or uh, you know, an estimation of that by F to G. Okay, so we're kind of doing a, a chord version of maybe one of the guitar lines that he might be playing throughout the whole thing. Okay, so after this G, I'm gonna take my ring finger and my pinky, which are already kind of grabbing this power chord, fifth fret on the A and D string, and then jump back to my original chord, okay? So remember, four, five. If we're thinking more in terms of like chords and scales, now this is gonna take us, right when you do the slide here, the five to seven to five, back to F. What this does is this takes us into a different position. Everybody's favorite position, A minor pentatonic. So you can think of this as a double stop back to F, okay? Now one thing to always think about if you're accompanying a singer or if you're singing yourself is when to do 
maybe flashier type things. And again, that's why that pentatonic scale is amazing because you can double stop through it, do a lot of different runs, and it's always gonna sound really good no matter what key you're in, that minor pentatonic relative minor spot. Again, in this instance, it's A, is always gonna sound good. So, you know, if we have like a, Thunder only happens when it's raining. Sing or break, do something fancy. Right? So in, in between where the words aren't, because if you're doing just runs while a singer is trying to melodically sing a phrase, odds are you're gonna clash. If you don't know exactly what he or she is doing and you're matching it, you just wanna kind of like hit a quick riff or something. You always wanna do it in that pause and invariably there will be a pause. <laughs> do something. If this just happens to be a double stop through that scale, you could easily do anything pentatonic. We could even go to the top of the scale. Maybe, you know, something like that, like F to G. All of these are just coming from that minor scale. F to G. Minor pentatonic. And again, even though there's nothing A minor about this, it's just uh, that minor pentatonic is such a great way of, you know, it just works out well that it's easy to maybe use two fingers to go through that position. So even though A minor isn't really a chord that we're using, that A minor pentatonic spot, on your guitar, this this real estate right here is always a great thing to be able to jump from, you know, a four chord to a five chord. It just kind of works out that way with the, with the hand position. That's why it's, you know, kind of like the go-to shape in all of guitar playing, minor pentatonic is where it's at. So really that's one way to kind of supplement the same two chords over and over again. Another way is to really just know where the notes in the key are around these chords. So what I mean by that, again, we're just going from F to G. Have the inflection notes. Uh, and when I say inflection notes, it's notes in the key that are in that specific position instead of transitioning to a different position. So if we look at this F chord, right, we can always kind of grab any major bar chord where your pinky, your pinky's lined up, you know, two frets higher than your root note is, you can always add that right there, that next note. Because if this is an F, right, this is a G, F to a G, same thing. Okay, you can always kind of add that. You can always add the same fret on the B string. Okay, now the risk that you run when you do this, when your pinky leaves, and then you leave that D string open, you get this flat seven, dominant seven chord, which on the four chord generally won't always work. On the five chord, it always works. Okay, so just as an example, if you kind of abandon ship with your pinky here, I personally think it sounds a little bit better on the five chord. Keep in mind, I'm kind of embellishing a lot of these just as an example. Uh, you know, in like an actual situation, you, you might not want to do things this busy, but it's just different things you can kind of do in certain moments to break up some of the monotony of just kind of playing it over and over again, right? Now, uh, the, the thing about having these inflection points is, you know, it might kind of put a lot of pressure on your, on your bar right here, specifically on acoustic guitar. All this stuff works for electric too. But another thing that you can do is really take the meat of this chord, which is always gonna be the middle four strings. So if we just kind of leave the open E strings here, and then you can see my thumb is muting it, so I don't really get a lot of it. This is just another way to play it, just different chord voicings. And then also too, those inflections, sound a little bit better because, you know, because there's less uh, going on as far as like we're taking a lot of the low 
low mid range out of the chord by just focusing on the higher voice. You know, there's just so many different things you can do. And the great thing is all this stuff is really movable. Anytime you see like a major chord, a lot of times those inflections are gonna be the same thing. You can do more of like a, like a John Frusciante, like Jimi Hendrix type inflection, which will focus on maybe this G chord. So the F chord can be kind of tame to the G. A lot, of, a lot of those things that, you know, Hendrix does is that note right there in a major chord, again, where your middle finger is, that's the major third, that kind of hammer on to the fourth note in the, in the key, and then ending up. It's a very Hendrix-y, Frashani type thing to do. Kind of do that little hammer on, and then end up on the root note, right? So this would be a major third, hammer on to the fourth, and then end up back on the root note. F. Double stop. So a lot of different things that you can do. Now again, when it comes to like a bigger part of the song, you might want a little bit more volume, a little more openness. And that is where open chords really come in well. Right now, this is just uh, an F to a G bar chord way that we're playing it. If you maybe want to open up this to an F major seven. Which again, for the, for the biggest part of the chorus, I think that's kind of where to go because you have so much sustain going on that you're adding a little bit more energy than you could get if you just and then when you come back it really creates a pretty wide dynamic you know always go to that minor pentatonic. When in doubt, mm, minor pentatonic. That's really the number one lesson from this entire channel is when in doubt, minor pentatonic. And then if you want to get even higher voiced, it's always great to know just totally different chord voicings. You know, maybe uh, our root notes here are the first fret on the E string and the third fret on the E string, F to G. Same root notes, but uh, a pitch up is going to be the eighth fret on the A string to the 10th fret on the G string. So maybe we want to use something totally different, uh, or just kind of like higher class chords. Super high class. Major seven to dominant seven, which would be, you know, these two chord voicings right here. Your uh, root note is this F with your middle finger on the eighth fret. Your pointer finger is grabbing the major third, seventh fret on the D string. And then your ring finger is grabbing the ninth fret on the G string. So, you know, a lot of people would think of this as what's called a shell voicing, where we don't have all the notes in the chord like we would up here, but we just have kind of the, the highlights. The root, the major third, and a major seven. And then we do kind of what's really similar, two frets higher, except instead of a major seven, a dominance of flat seven, which is kind of exclusive to that G in this key, right? So this is just another way to kind of really Dial it back. Into that minor pentatonic spot. And then when you want to get big. And then also when you want to end it, I always have arguments about this whenever I'm playing with the singer. I always want to end this on a C. A lot of times they'll want to end on an F. But no, it's like to me, this is dreams. When you wake up, it's you waking up. 
I end the song on a C, but whatever. That's has nothing to do with this lesson. So the main point is that just knowing different chord voicings, F to G, F to G, shell voicing, whatever. Different ways to inflect those, and then when in doubt, and there's a break uh, in, the, in the vocals or whatever is providing the melody, when in doubt, always minor pentatonic double stops. So, there you have it. How to fancify a two chord song. Great song, again. Just because it's only two chords doesn't mean it's not a fantastic song. Fleetwood Mac, all time boss, OGs. Oh, so if you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website, and I'll get back to you, and let me know what else you guys wanna see, and I'll talk to y'all soon, thanks a lot.